everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And today, guys, we got to talk about the last game the Toronto Blue Jays just played, where they lost 8-2 against the Tampa Bay Rays. The game before that, we saw everything positive about the Toronto Blue Jays. And in this one, we saw a couple things that might be concerning. We're going to take a look at that in a little bit more of a deeper dive. Before we do, guys, make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button if you enjoy Blue Jays news and content. So first of all, Nick, we lose today. We actually just watched the game live on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. What is your first initial reactions? What are you feeling after that loss? Well, I, I'm the type of guy, I'm the type of individual, I like to start with the good. And I do think that there is still a very positive takeaway from this game alone, and that is George freaking Springer, man. There, there was a, a lot of conversations this entire offseason about what are we going to get from the vet, George Springer? You know, he's halfway through his contract right now. And a lot of people were saying, we talked to Ben Nicholson-Smith about this. We talked to several other guys about this, saying, this probably isn't what you anticipated or what you expected when you decided to pay this guy as much money as you decided to pay him. And last season, there was a significant lack of everybody echo it together right now, slug. And we wanted to see more slug. And so far, right now, we're two games in, so it's a very small sample size. But my guy's on pace for 162 home runs right now. And yeah. I feel pretty good about the slug. Yeah, and this one today, guys, he hit a home run in the second at bat, very similar to what we saw in the first game. And look, it's a great sign. I mean, what I'm seeing from George Springer right now, he's attacking pitches up in the zone, uh, off speed, fastball, doesn't matter what it is. He's seeing his pitch and he's swinging at it. And that's like what we didn't see from him last year. And a lot of people are questioning is it a philosophy approach that George Springer did different last year? Was he trying to hit the ball the other way more? Whatever it was, it wasn't working. And what we're expecting is Don Mattingly to come in and get these guys back to their strengths. And we're already seeing a great example now. Is he going to hit 162 home runs? No. But I'm seeing a good approach right out of the gate from George Springer. And it's a lot of positive and a lot to love. Because what you're saying is, yeah, we got to get some value in this fourth year of his con contract. Yeah, and having a locked-in leadoff guy that, it, you know instills fear into the opposing pitchers. That's something that we missed last year, and it was what we signed George Springer to do. Having Springer come out and be the Springer of old, right, the guy that he was with the Houston Astros, or even the guy that he was with the Toronto Blue Jays in, like, the first two years yeah. of his career, that is absolutely massive to this offense. Because I'll tell you right now, I believe in Bo, I believe mm. in Guerrero, and if you can get George Springer in there then that top three, now you're in the conversation of, oh shit, that's a top 10, top three in all of baseball. And that's something that we just didn't have last year at all. No, the, the offense has got a bang, man. And, and especially in the top part of the lineup, you're right. Because look, last year you almost had 700 plate appearances. You got to have that guy give you an effort, give you quality. Like he, he was an average uh, hitter last year. For most, lot, most hitters, they wish they could have had George Springer's last year. You know, that would get, keep him in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. But he needs to do a lot better getting paid that kind of money. So for me, obviously, we look at the score of the Toronto Blue Jays. That's probably <laughs> the most notable thing. I know we had uh, an RBI, a sack fly from Alejandro Kirk. Mm -hmm. But that was it, man. When you look at the box score, there wasn't a lot to love in this Blue Jays game. They get blown out. I mean, we were really praising the pitching with Jose Barrios and the bullpen yet last game, but this one, you had Chris Bassett on the mound, and we did not get a similar result. I thought for the first two innings, he was cooking, and then we started walking, guys, and then we had some big errors on the on the defensive side of things. Let's get into that a little bit, but let's start with Chris Bassett. I yeah, mean, there's not his, that... There's his line right yeah. there, everybody. Five innings pitched, six hits given up. Four earned runs. Now, five actually did come around the bases. We're going to talk about the errors later because he wasn't mm. charged with that last one. But ultimately, it's not the start that you want to see from Chris Bassett. Am I worried about the season? Not at all. I mean, I tweeted this out saying that I'm not worried about him in the slightest. Um, I think that today, I think that today we leaked a couple, a couple too many over. And, um, and he was attacking the strike zone which I really like. I, I, I always will uh, you know, uh, commend a, a hitter for, or a pitcher, excuse me, for attacking the strike zone because I prefer that than you dancing around and walking a bunch of guys because that's just the worst thing, and we've seen that before. Chris Bassett was going after the strike zone. 
but it was a little bit too easy. And you're up against the Tampa Bay Rays lineup, who was really good at baseball last year, guys. They were really damn good at baseball, and they just got after you. I was actually in the washroom when he gave up that grand slam, but, I mean, you were telling me that it was a middle-middle fastball. You're going against Brandon Lowe. Mm -hmm. The guy can bang. The, mm -hmm. We know that this guy is capable of, of putting 30 over the fence at the end of the year. And he took your yard for 444 feet. And there yeah, it is. There it is. Middle, middle. Yeah, a lot of his fastballs, right? Look, Bassett, he even said it uh, in this offseason. Look, uh, velocity, you know, he doesn't like the whole velocity thing because that's not a pitching, right? You're not really pitching. You're just throwing gas. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to throw at your velocity, you know, Chris Bassett, I think he knew, would know this. He can't leave middle, middle fastballs over the heart of the plate to Brandon Lowe. Uh, you miss right here, you know, foul ball, and then you leak one over, right? So I think, yes, the fastball was catching too much of the zone. Even that sweeper, he has so many pitches. Even the sweeper was missing a lot. He didn't really have much command of that. That was making him fall behind in counts. But the most important thing is you can't live here, especially when you're throwing at his velocity. You got you could get some over with that beautiful curveball he's got. Yeah. People are not sitting on that. But if you're getting a cookie like that, you're going to see runs like that come home. I agree, man. I mean, I don't want to take... Uh... I don't want to completely like hate on this guy because again, there, there were some really good innings of work here. Like in the first two innings, it looked like he yep. was hooking. In fact, the first inning, it was three up, three down, three oh. strikeouts. Yeah, the first four guys, four strikeouts. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was like, oh my gosh, I Chris <laughs> Bassett, the hound on the See, mound is but, popping off. Because he was locating though. You know, he was locating yep. that slider, he's locating the sweeper, locating the curveball, using the fastball. But then for whatever reason, he wasn't getting calls again from the umpire. There was an umpire factor, maybe a little fraction in there. But also, yeah, you, you, there's no excuse for that one right there. But again, it's the first start of the season. Like you said, I'm not worried in the slightest. He got blown up against St. Louis last year. Yeah. Look what he ended up with. Look at his great ERA at the end of the year. Chris Bassett, I would rely on in a wild card uh, series, no problem. I completely agree, man. And I, I, just, I think that this is just one of those things that's going to happen. It's the beginning of the year. I'm not going to put too much on it. Uh, again, like Tropicana Field is really, really difficult. Uh, it does suck that you lost in this capacity 8-2 to two, because right now it's like we're yeah. coming off of that massive win, yep. winning 8-2. to two, And at this point, we're 1-1, one and, one, and we've gotten 10 runs and they've gotten 10 runs. So you could argue that we are legitimately like exactly equivalent right now. Yeah. Uh, so it's tough to lose like that. Um, and it's especially tough when you're watching the defense do what the defense did. I mean, the mm. Toronto Blue Jays were known last season for their outfield defense being phenomenal. And, I mean, credit to the outfield defense. It was still great today, and it's yeah, going to be great. I'm sure great. it will. The infield... Not as much. Time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Yeah, we had three errors on the infield. One from Wes Parsons who came in. And then two from Bo Bichette. I mean, this was one example. I mean, we were watching the live play-by-play. -play, mm -hmm. And look, this is a tough play. You're ranging back. He's already in the outfield. Shallow outfield. It's a tough throw. It's it's an in-between hop. Honestly, it's the weakest of errors. Like, I really don't think it's it's a problem. Like, it's a hard. Like, Bo doesn't have a strong arm. Yeah. And, and Bo, Bo, all you got to do is get it on target. It just so happens it was an in-between hop, and Vladdy could not be able to get that into the glove. So that's an error. But there was another error. He bobbled it. He had to shovel it over to Kevin Biggio. He was safe at second. They tried to go to first. He was also safe. So that is an error, too. It's tough to see, especially with Bo Bichette, because Bo Bichette, we all praised him last year for the defensive improvements. He made in his own game. Overall, the entire MLB is still below defender in, the, in that infield. But you were hoping that he would continue in this train of, like, you know, going in the right direction. And he still can. He started off last year actually bad defensively in the first opening series against the St. Louis Cardinals. So I'm giving him some time. Of course, it's a small sample size. But you'd like to hope that maybe he could have some better outings uh, here. And well, going. quick shout-out to Michael Harrison over here on uh, on Twitter. I, I pulled up a tweet from him and highlighting kind of what it was that you were saying. That looking at the errors, in 2021, terrible. Yeah. In 2022, terrible. In 2023, manageable we yeah. can handle yeah. that eight errors at the shortstop position is not anything to scoff at now he's not necessarily going out and making the elite plays that some right. of those other guys are capable of doing like frankie lindo or some somebody else uh but at the very least he wasn't fully hurting you last year i'm not i'm not worried about this yet because again some of the plays that he was dealing with especially that one too like that was just that a was really a tough, play. tough play and I mean, he tried his best. It was close enough. 
Like, if Guerrero was, like, really playing at his top of his game, maybe right. he scoops that up, and maybe that's an out. I don't know, right. but I'm not worried about it. It is it, – it's tough to see this early in the season, like, you're in field, because, again – Defense is something that this management has really prioritized yeah. for seasons now. So I want it to get better. But I I think at this point, we, we kind of know who Bobochet is as a player, yeah, too. And know? I think we know what our infield defense is looking like, especially after Matt Chapman leaves. I mean, we haven't really, we're going to see it this season what a full year of the infield defense looks like without Matt Chapman. Because Matt Chapman is an incredible defender. Yeah. Great range, great arm, like gold glove, platinum glover, best in the league, right? So when you lose that guy right next to Bo Bichette, you're probably going to see some plays that maybe Bo has to go get, or maybe they squeak through for base hits. Things that you won't really see on the stat card or the stat sheet of not having Matt Chapman. So uh, I think that's good. overall losing Matt Chapman is going to be a weaker infield defense. And uh, you got to have the guys pick it up and just do their job. He right? was a vacuum over there at third base, and it is going to be tough without him, guys. Ultimately, the Toronto Blue Jays right now are 1-1. One and one. Incredible first game where you yeah. saw everything pop off. Yesterday, <laughs> not so much. We're going to be live watching the third Toronto Blue Jays game of the entire season in a couple hours. And then also the fourth game after that, guys. So hit the like, smash the subscribe button. We want to see all of you guys there. Yeah, and guys, shout out to all of our Patreon members. You guys are absolutely awesome. And all to our YouTube members as well. You guys are also freaking awesome. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, Go, go Jays, Jays Go! go!